Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries. In this segment, I'd like to talk about toners and probes. And toners and probes are devices that have been around for actually a long time. And they're, it's a tool that we can use for tracing wire. And I don't care if you're a, a telephone guy, a data guy, a cable TV guy, or just a homeowner remodeler, you probably ought to own a toner and a probe. I'm telling you, everybody ought to own one of these things. They're great for tracing wires. And, uh, you know, uh, a tone generator does exactly what it says. It is a device that will ins in insert a signal or a tone onto a conductor that my probe device can then go out and, and find. So if I hold my probe up near my toner, and I don't even have to have them touch it, obviously I, it's generating a tone, and I can either plug it into an outlet, uh, clip a pair, you know, with the alligator clips here, I'll be able to clip a, a, a something, you know, a conductor to it, and it's going to again put out a tone that my probe device can pick up. Now, anybody's toners work with anybody's probes. So if you have to have one from somebody else, should work with ours, no problems. And matter of fact, these toners can come with multiple sounds on them so that you could actually tone multiple sounds back in your panels, okay? Now these probe devices, this is what I use to go find the other end of the wire. So maybe I'm working inside of a panel like this or maybe down in a manhole, who knows where, but I'm trying to find it, uh, the other end of the cable with my probe device. Now these are in what we call inductive listening devices. They're going to pick up any induced noise they might run across. Uh, for instance, static on my uh, arm, uh, they would pick up, uh, if I happen to be pushed a button near a radio station, I might actually hear the radio station. Uh, that little noise you hear right there is the noise being generated off these electrical lights in the room, and obviously here's an extension cord, and uh, the probe is, is actually picking up the interference from that magnetic field being generated off the cable. So. Anyway, so uh, they'll pick up any induced noise, and again, anybody's toners works with anybody's probe. Now, we can use these to trace any kind of wire, folks. I don't care, again, if it's coax, Romex, as long as there's no power and it can't have any AC going on, uh, category cabling or anything, but really it's metal, you can put a tone down it. And I've used these to put a tone on a fish tape and use that to drop behind a wall and then use my probe to try and find that fish tape on the other side. Uh, of the sheetrock. Now that's not always real accurate, but we can use it for a lot of things. Matter of fact, here's a piece of quarter of bead from a drywall job left over out of my stack over here. And if I got my toner on, I'm going to take one of the, the test leads and attach it to the, the uh, 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 corner bead, and I'm going to leave the other one just dangling because I attached it as well. It would actually kind of short the toner, which wouldn't hurt it, but it actually would cancel the tone. So if I come down the corner bead, down the entire length, it's basically making noise at me and anywhere along if anything else was touching to this that is metal it would also be making noise and uh, it's interesting if you listen to the noise and I happen to touch the track you notice the noise went away or down some and really the reason is because it's actually inducing some of that actually into my body so uh, be aware if you can put a tone really just about on anything okay and uh, when you work with uh, something like this uh, the more you use it, the better you're going to be at using it, okay? And uh, it's, I would say, tracing wire is somewhat of an art form. And again, the more you do it, the better you will be at doing it. Now, these kind of products are really designed to uh, test what we call end-to-end, -end, where I'm going to attach this onto an end of a wire, and then I'm going to go look at the other end of the wire and try and find it. So uh, that's really what they're meant for. You know, you can trace along a wire and find it in a bundle a lot of times, but if I'm trying to trace wire behind walls or in the ground or something like that, actually that's not what these are meant for. We do have testers that do that. And if you want to look at them, go check out the IDEA website and look for circuit tracers. Now you're going to spend a lot more money in a circuit tracer. You're, I'm talking maybe over $1,000. Where a typical toner and probe, you know, again, they've been around a long time. Low-end versions of these things, entry-level versions, will be in the $30, $40, maybe $50 or $60 range. A professional version of these things could be, you know, 80 bucks upwards, 150 bucks. It all depends on the bells and whistles you get with them. Now, I'm going to step you through uh, what you can do with really anybody's toner and probe and how to maybe use it and what to look out for when you use it. And if you want to look at like our Trace Tone product, which is our entry level product, or our professional version of a toner and probe, uh, go check out my channel. I got two videos on those and I go through all the features and benefits on those. Okay. Now, if you're going to use toner and probe for tracing, as I said earlier, can't have any AC in the line. Okay. We got to make sure we don't have that going on. But other than that, you can trace any kind of wire. Now, 
If uh, I'm going to trace, say, a piece of cataract cable that's sticking out of an outlet in a room someplace, and I want to find the other end of that cable back here in my panel, I'm going to take my uh, uh, pick a pair here, and in this case, I'm going to take the blue pair, and I'm going to strip the conductors and get to bare copper and attach my two leads to that, and that should then be putting a tone on the blue pair that would correspond to a, ca a blue pair on a cable back here in a panel. So now with my probe device, I'm going to come back to the panel and I'm going to look for the wires making the noise. Okay? Now, one of the challenges of tracing wire is that when you bundle a bunch of cataract cable like this together and you put a tone down one of the cables, that tone essentially is going to bleed out into other cables nearby and conductors and uh, in essence you're going to get more than one thing making noise back here is what it boils down to. Now these tone uh, probe devices, they have a volume control and we can back the volume control down until we hear the loudest sounding cable. Now, I'm going to tell you, most of us don't hear real well, and uh, you're going to get a couple of them or three of them that sound real close together, and you can't quite figure out uh, which one it might be. Well, there's a couple tricks here we can use, and if you read the instructions, you would see these. Uh, we could go back here to the, to the outlet in the room, and if we put a tone down a pair uh, in the cable, like in this case, the blue pair, and the you'll notice in cattery cabling all these pairs are twisted together. Well, this twisting, what it does, it eliminates noise or, or, the, or crosstalk in cabling, which also eliminates the sound from the toner, so it actually weakens it, and by the time you get back here to the panel, it's not as loud as it could have been. So, let's go back to the outlet in the room and disconnect one of the two, and then go to the, one of the other conductors in the cables, say the orange cable and strip that one off and then attach that other lead to the orange conductor and then I have the other one say to the blue conductor and now since those two conductors are not twisted together you should hear a louder sound inside your panel. Now if that doesn't help <laughs> we got another backup and that would be to come back out here to the outlet in a room and actually disconnect the black lead, completely disconnect it and just dangle it and actually have it pointing toward the ground and, and it actually if you can ground it even better and that should significantly upgrade what you hear inside your panels. So those are a few tricks to get uh, to try. Now if you still have problems identifying which one it might be, here's another problem you might run across. Say I've got a cable that I'm putting a tone on out here in an outlet in a room someplace. And say it's one of these that comes to this board on this uh, inside my panel here. Now this board, what it is, it's a telephone splicing board. And it allows me to splice together 10 cattery cables together for phone services, making them basically you know, all one, all the blues, all the orange, all the greens, all the browns. So all the blue pairs are all spliced together on this board. So the blue pair I'm putting a tone down, say, is now putting a tone down, say, one of these here. So one of these is actually the one I'm looking for. But since the board is splicing all the connections together, they're all singing at you when you're coming back in here and looking to find out which one it might be. So you really need an open on either end of the cable when you go to do your testing. So at the outlet, it's open, you disconnect whatever's plugged into it, you plug a toner into the outlet or clip it on some wires, and obviously back here it really ought to be open as well if you're going to really isolate it and find the one. So that means i got to come in here and start pulling wires out of the boards. Now, uh, before you go to that trouble, I'll save you know, sh share with you a tip that is not in your instructions. And that would be to take the old tone, or the probe device, crank it up, and I'm going to take the finger and I'm going to slobber on it a little bit, and I'm going to set it on a connection I think is actually the one I'm looking for. Then I'm going to take this probe device, hold it near my ear, because when I push the button on the probe, I'm going to hear a really faint tone on the one that actually has the tone. Any of the others should give me nothing, and uh, uh, you give that one a try. You might find out it actually works, because otherwise we're back here to actually uh, disconnecting the other end here and trying to isolate again that cable. Now, another one I run across actually quite a bit is, say I put a tone at a data jack in a room someplace, okay? And I want to now find the cataract cable that will feed the outlet in the room. Well, this uh, say that one of these uh, Cat5 cables coming back inside my panel is feeding this data jack we're putting that, that toner on. And say it's this one right here. Well, this is actually connected to this uh, little connection in the middle of the board. And these are little, what we call cross-connect uh, connection uh, boards that we can actually take and then cross-connect to an active device. In this case, I'm going to plug it into my router here. Now, the router is actually now providing data to the outlet in the room. Now, you have your toner plugged in out here in the outlet in the room. Well, the 
device here, the router, is an active piece of equipment, and actually the, the uh, electronics in it, the circuitry, actually is shorting your toner. So in essence, uh, you're shorting your toner. So now we have tone. If I actually took the two leads and shorted them together, your uh, sound is really going to go away. It actually diminishes really quickly, and within a foot or two, wherever you got this toner, you got no sound. So uh, you got to understand, there's got to be an open in order to get the sound out of here. So you need to come back here and disconnect that patch cord out of there and make sure that you can, again, isolate that cable on the other end. So if you come into the panel and nothing is singing at you, you're either in the wrong panel or um, you could have shorted something there. All right, and if you don't do those basic things or you stay to those tips, you can really use those on anybody's toners and probes. And as I said earlier, if you want to look at the actual features and benefits of the products we have, I have a short video and shows you all the features and benefits there. Okay? Hey, well, thanks for coming to another segment. I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and I'll see you next time.